Hello everyone, welcome again. So today we'll be talking about metals, um, the module, and last time we spoke about chemical trends in the periodic table. So today we'll be talking about the physical properties and how they vary when we move around the periodic table and look at different chemicals. Okay? So here we have some kind of chemical, boiling, and boiling is a physical property, or boiling point is a physical property that we're quite interested in. And there are certain trends that we see as we move around the periodic table. So let's start with melting and boiling point. So melting and boiling point is basically related to how strong the intermolecular bonds are. Now the question is, well, what about, well, we're talking about elements. Why, why do I talk about molecules? Well, because molecules can include elements as well. They just, it's just another word for particle. So for instance, O2 is a molecule, but it's also the elemental form of oxygen. So we can talk about, we can use molecule, the word, interchangeably. So across the period, the boiling point increases as metallic and covalent network bonds, bonds become stronger. So if you look at the first group, and as we move slowly across, we see that the boiling point and melting point tends, tends to increase because the bonds are getting stronger as we go across. So as we go through the transition metals, the bonds get stronger, once we hit the covalent network species, like carbon and silicon, then again that becomes very strong and very difficult to melt. But then, something interesting happens when we hit the non-metals. We get very weak intermolecular forces, and so we get a very substantial decrease in melting and boiling point. So if we look at this graph here, we can see, as we go up, we can see a very sharp increase in the boiling points and melting points of the elements as we move from atomic number 1 to atomic number 5. But then once we hit 6, which is carbon, then or 7 maybe, then we suddenly spike downwards because we've suddenly turned into a gas. Okay, So it's because of these very weak intermolecular forces. So remembering that O2 molecule, well, it doesn't bond to other O2 molecules. It kind of just whizzes around. So there's no real way to, to keep them all together. So that's why it has a very low melting and boiling point. So when we go down a group, however, there's not really a distinct trend that we see between melting and boiling points. It depends on really what group you're talking about and also on some other factors. So we can't really discern a group as we go, uh, we can't discern a trend as we go down a group, which is unfortunate. So melting and boiling points in general are very dependent on the bonding type. So we're talking here covalent network, covalent molecular, metallic, ionic, those kind of substance, those kind of bonding types, and how crystalline the structure is. So if, for instance, a bond is very strong, but it doesn't bond to other elements in, in a system, then we have a very weak or a very low melting and boiling point because they're not sort of working together to avoid being melted or boiled. Okay. So we move on now to electronegative, uh, sorry, not electronegativity, electrical conductivity. Spoke about electronegativity last time. And it basically relates to how metallic an element is because remembering those metallic bonds, there's these, new, there's these protons in, in the lattice. And then all around them are these free electrons that are allowed to go wherever they want. Okay? And so the more free electrons or free charges you have, the more electrically conductive you are. Because if I put a voltage here and here, then the electrons will all go in a certain direction. So we need to have lots of free electrons, otherwise we're not very electrically conductive. So as we go across the period, it gets, we get less con, uh, conductive materials because simply we're getting less metallic. And if we get less metallic, we have less free electrons. And if we have less free electrons, we have less conductivity. Okay? Now down groups 1 to 3, so we're talking about the metallic group here. So if we look at the very left-hand most part of the periodic table, 
the electrical conductivity decreases because their nuclei get bigger. Okay? So the metallic character of elements increases down groups. That's true, but because the, the nuclei are getting much bigger because of all those extra protons, it means that when an electron tries to go through the lattice, it bumps into all these very big nucleuses or nuclei before it can get through very quickly. Okay? So basically, while it gets more metallic as we go down, because the nuclei are getting so big, the electron has a hard time getting through that lattice because there's just too much stuff in the way. Okay? So that's why the electrical conductivity decreases as we go down a group, even though the metallic character increases. So that makes sense. We move on to the next one, which is called ionization energy. Now, ionization energy, it's related to ions. So ions are about electrons and in the outer shell. So it's the energy required to remove one electron from the outermost shell. Okay? So now if we think about something like sodium, which has one electron in its outermost shell, it's not going to be very difficult to remove that electron. Does that make sense? So because it wants to get rid of it anyway. Now if we then we move to, say, helium or neon, where it has a full outer shell, it wants to keep that electron. So it's going to take more energy to ionize that element compared to, say, a group 1 metal element. Okay. So as we go down the group, the, elect the ionization energy decreases. So as we go down the group, it gets easier to get that electron to go away, or we use less energy, so to speak, to get that electron to go, to go away. And that's because the electrons are further from the nucleus, OK? Because they're so far away, and also remembering those shells. So as you go down the group, you get more and more shells. And so that means there's electrons repelling the outermost electrons, as well as the actual extra distance. So it gets very weakly bound. So you don't need a lot of energy to get that electron to go away. And so the inner shells also shield the nucleus, so that repulsive effect, and that reduces the effective charge, which means that the electron on the outside, the outermost electron, is very weakly bound. So you don't need a lot of energy to, to ionize that, those metals. And as we go across the group, uh, the period, sorry, the ionization energy increases. And the, that's because the distance from the nucleus decreases. The atomic radius essentially decreases because you're adding heaps of protons. And so the attractive force is bigger, so you need more energy to, get, to hit that electron out of the atom. Okay. So that wraps up today's lesson on the more physical properties of elements in the periodic table. So we looked at boiling and melting point, electrical conductivity, and first ionization energy. And so we'll move to the question segment, and hopefully you'll be able to explain all these trends and use them to answer these questions. So if we looked at this, which physical property would it be? So A, electronegativity. Well, no, because as we go higher towards more um, non-metals, so towards 10, we would see an increase in electronegativity. So it's probably not A. Ionization energy? No, again, because ionization energy actually increases across the period consistently. So as we go across the period, which is going up in atomic number, we would see an increase in, or a steady increase in ionization energy. Atomic radius? Um, atomic radius decreases as you go across the period. So we don't see that trend here. So we're left with C, which is the melting point. And so you can even tell sort of by the, by the units that 4,000 would be something like degrees. We don't really see any other units like that in that sort of range. So we know it's melting point. OK, so moving on. Explain why the first ionization energy decreases down the group and increases across the period. So we've got to explain two things here. So remembering explain is our verb. So down the group, the electrons in the outermost shell are further away. 
because there's more shells. And this increased distance reduces the force of attraction between the nucleus and the electron. So that electron way out in the, in the outer shell, it's not really being attracted very strongly. Also, the inner electrons repel the outer electrons, reducing the effective charge of the nucleus. So if you imagine there's all these electrons pushing outwards, so the attractive force of the nucleus, no matter how big, will also be reduced. So across the period, the number of protons increases. And with no additional shells being added, the force of attraction is increased because as we just have a set, if, even if we imagine that the, the orbit is set, it doesn't change. If we keep adding protons, the force of attraction will obviously get bigger. So, there are high, so the increased attraction by the high number of protons means that the ionization energy will increase because it takes more energy to, to knock that electron out. Whereas as we go down the group, because it's getting further and further away with more electrons in the way, it becomes easier to remove that electron from the outer shell. Okay. So moving on to question eight. Explain why, with reference to intermolecular bonds, the boiling point of group one elements is higher than, the, than group seven elements. Okay. So why is the halogens, group seven, a gas when the group one elements, which are metals, why are they like that? Okay, so now we'll try and explain that. So group one elements possess metallic bonds. Okay, that should be obvious to you because we call them well metals. Now these bonds are very strong, and so that explains group one's high melting and boiling point. Okay, so metallic bonds are very strong. So group seven elements exist as diatomic gases. Usually, not all the time, but usually. So chlorine, fluorine, they're all F2 or Cl2. They're all diatomic, so two atoms in the molecule. Now, because each atom is only bonded to one other atom, the forces between individual molecules is very low. So for instance, if I have this guy, fluorine, and another one, there's not really any sort of bond between the two, right? So they don't hold each other together. So it means they boil very easily. Because remembering that if you're a solid, each part of the solid will hold on to the next part very, very, very tightly. But in this case, because there is no bond between them, or a very weak bond between them, then it means that their boiling point is very low, because there's not much holding them together. Okay, So that's why, in this case, Halogens, or group 7, are gases and have a very low boiling point because they don't attract each other. Whereas group 1, which are metals, because each atom is you know, bonded to the next atom and vice versa, then you get very strong network structures which take a lot more energy to make boil or melt. Okay. So moving on to question 9. Consider group 1 elements again. As you go down the group, the electrical conductivity decreases despite an increased number of electrons. Explain this. Okay? So let's explain why, as even though we get more electrons, we get more met metallic character, why do we get a lower electrical conductivity? Okay? So this was explained in this lesson. So the total number of electrons that are free to move is approximately constant down the group. That's one thing to note. So as you go down the group, the amount of electrons that are free to move is pretty much the same. Just the valence electrons, really. Um, could be slightly more or less, depending uh, on different sort of conditions. But we'll just say for now it's approximately constant. However, as you go down the group, the nucleus of the bottom elements are very much bigger than the top of the group, because there's heaps and heaps more protons. So as you go down the group, you get a very, very large nucleus. This means that within the lattice, there is less room to move freely, resulting in an electrical, lower electrical conductivity. So because there's such, a, there's such huge nuclei in the lattice, the electron can't get through easily. So that's what we call resistance, and that's why the electrical conductivity goes down as we go up, in, as we go down the group, because it such a big nuclei in the way. Okay? Okay. So 
That wraps up today's lesson on the physical properties and the trends that they possess in the periodic table. So we looked at electrical conductivity, melting and boiling point, and first ionization energy. So I hope you learned something about the physical trends in the periodic table, and I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Thank you.